What's going on guys? My name is Dustin. Welcome back into Good Hoops and unfortunately we have another team eliminated from the playoffs. The Atlanta Hawks finished in five games. The gentleman sweep against the Miami Heat who were playing without Kyle Lowry or Jimmy Butler which is kind of just insult to injury but that didn't matter for Miami who just absolutely clamped down on Trey Young and just kind of ruined the entire structure and flow of Atlanta's offense. Um, just absolutely had Trey Young clamped up, locked down, tortured him, whatever you want to say. Trey had a couple games, like 25, 29 points, but it was not efficient. <laughs> it was He was shooting them out of games, and he just didn't look right. There was no confidence. There was no anything. The playmaking was limited. He, I think I read something that said he had more turnovers than... Um, than field goals made or something like that. Like, they just absolutely made his life miserable. Um, here it is. So, in the series, he had 15 points a game on 31% shooting, uh, including 18% from three, and they lost uh, four to one, with the one coming with, like, a last-second floater. They gave them the lead and, and won it for him. Uh, so, needless to say, what next? Where do the Hawks go from here? Um, they're an interesting team, too. I was looking on Hoops Hype, has all, like, the salary cap info and everything. And they're an interesting team because a lot of their guys are, are locked in. Like, a lot of their guys are already under contract. It's a couple players that are going to have um, qualifying offers that can be extended. Uh, there's Kevin Knox, who they traded for right at the deadline, um, giving up Cam Reddish for him. And then also uh, Skylar Mays and Sharif Cooper are going to be eligible for qualifying offers. But those guys didn't really get a whole lot of minutes. So I don't know what's going to happen with them. But to me, the big thing that's going to happen here is Trey Young's extension is going to take effect. And this year he made $8 million. And next year he is going to make $30 million. So they're going to be a team that I think has to do addition by subtraction to... Uh, Sure, up this roster, and other than other than maybe doing like a two or three players for one to try to upgrade at you know maybe the wings because you have you have uh, Bogdanovich, you have Danilo Gallinari, you have Kevin Herter, um, you have these these three and D type shooters, but Gallinari is getting older. I know John Collins was hurt this year, and they do have him locked up as well for the next four years. Um, but really it's, it's going to be tough. They're going to have some tough decisions to make. Uh, Neko Okongwu looked great in the time that he got. So I don't know if that makes Clint Capella expendable, but when Clint Capella got hurt, Trey Hung kind of just completely fell apart. Like he needed that rim running center that he could throw lobs to, to help open up the offense. And I think that's the big problem is that this offense was so easy for Miami to stop. Like, all Miami had to do is, is suffocate Trey Young and put him in uncomfortable positions and make it hard for him to get to his spots and to get into his flow. And this team fell apart. Lou Williams was hardly playing near the end. Uh, Sharif Cooper, like I said, didn't really play. And then that was kind of it for ball handlers, unless, you know, you throw in um, when Bogdanovich would kind of lead with the second unit or, you know, whatever makeshift makeshift they were doing. So to me, the first priority is probably shore up the backup guard position. You want a backup point guard who's going to come in and who's going to be, you know, able to lead the offense, able to create his own shot, able to distribute um, all those minutes that Trey's on the bench. But they need to be unselfish enough and complimentary enough that they can play together to help keep a flow of the offense open as well. So I don't know who that would be, the, the player that comes to mind. There's no way they're going to afford them. There might be no way that Dallas lets him go now. Is Jalen Brunson, who was the player of who's the player of the playoffs right now, if, unless your name is Jordan Poole. Um, really, those two have been the big stories, and those two would be the ones, if I was Atlanta, that I would be going for. But 
DeAndre Hunter, one of the bright spots for this playoff run, and uh, tonight, no exception, 35 points, 11 rebounds, consistently, um, arguably their best defender. His play is probably what made them think that uh, Cam Reddish was expendable, even though getting Kevin Knox back and hardly using him was an odd choice, too. Um, Jalen Johnson is another interesting one. He was a player that was highly touted in the draft before some some issues, I believe more off the court type things. He he left early on in his season in college, um, and I think it kind of just hurt his draft stock. But he'd be an interesting one to see if they could like get more out of him and get him into those positions that they need when it comes time for second unit stuff. Um, but really, this this team is going to have a lot to do. They have a lot of their guys solidified. Uh, Lou Williams, Gorgie Jang, and uh, DeLon Wright are really the only three that got minutes this year that are off the books. So everyone else, it's going to be interesting. They're going to have some tough decisions to make. Uh, Travis Schlenk is going to have to decide, you know, who do we keep to surround Trey with? Where do we go? How do we get better? Um, I don't think the Warriors let someone like Jordan Poole go. If they do... Um, it could be because a team like Atlanta throws an obscene amount of money at him and he signs a qualifying offer. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what he decides to do. I know I said it in the other video, but like a Miles Bridges is definitely the type of player that they're going to want, that 3 and D who is just absolutely hounding people on defense and can get his own shot, can hit those open shots. He'd benefit a lot, um, as we've seen with LaMelo Ball, who they have a great chemistry and relationship. Trey Young, similarly, is a is a head-up, willing passer. So I think it could help as well. It could be just as complimentary. Um, and that's, that's really all. I don't want to see the Hawks be that team that desperately, like, packages three things and a pick three players and a pick together and like tries to get like Julius Randle like I think that would be a terrible move for the Hawks on the flip side someone I don't remember who it was said maybe the Hawks are a sleeper team to trade like three or four players and some picks for Zion if the Pelicans decide that's it which I would not say no to see what Zion and Trey Young look like on the court together I think that'd be uh, fascinating. Um, I don't know what they would, who they would have to give up in that deal. Um, you would want to keep someone, either uh, Herder or Hunter, probably have to give up one of them alongside Gallinari and Bogdanovich and who knows what else to make the salaries work. But I think that type of swing, if if it ends up being that type of dramatic off season, I think the Hawks could be right at the center of it. Because they're too stagnant a team to to sit. Like are this this roster is too set and too redundant to to just sit and be like, we'll run it back next year. It's because this year they underachieved most of the season, caught fire in the second half of the year, kinda started to resemble that team that made the Eastern Conference Finals last year. And immediately in the in the playoffs got clamped by Miami and that was it. And I think Miami is that good. I don't want to make it sound like this Hawks team was that terrible. But I think they've hit their, their limit as far as this roster and this construct can go. So I think if there's a lot of shakeups and there's a lot of moves that happen in this offseason, you're going to hear the Atlanta Hawks name come up a lot. I think they're going to be, even if they're not like super super active making tons of moves i think they're gonna be like around every big situation or potential move um and that i think is everything i wanted to cover for them um the heat look incredible i really wish they could play both boston and milwaukee but the heat will have uh whoever wins the toronto 76er series which will be a good series too but really, I want to see Heat and then Celtics or Bucks. The, those are some good matchups. Uh, so I'm very excited with that. But that's it, Hawks fans. Uh, if you have any thoughts on the team or moves you want to see made, anything like that, please hit the comments. Let me know. Um, otherwise, if you have just thoughts on the playoffs, how these games have been going, please let me know that too. I'd love to hear it. Um, and that that's everything, really. Thank you very much for watching. 